Praise the Lord, everyone. I pray that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. I tried to go live, but the weather and my signal's not permitting it. So I just want to come on here and do a video. Share the word of God that's been deposited in my spirit. The Lord dropped um, this in my spirit a couple of days ago during prayer. And I began to, uh, he began to speak to me on the benefits of prayer, the benefits of calling on Jesus. Praise God. How many know there's benefits in prayer? There's power in prayer. Prayer changes things. And I want to start out with a, a breakthrough prayer. How many know that you can have an get into a place of prayer and even have an anointing to pray? That breakthrough comes forth, praise God. And pray until you experience that breakthrough, until you get bre broke through in the spirit, till there's a shift in the spirit, till things begin to change. And I, I begin to think about Hannah how Hannah was barren and she could not have children and I begin to think about that so I want to read um, a little bit out of Samuel this video may be fairly long because I'm going to read some scripture and this is part two of the benefits of prayer and then I may do a part three praise God I pray that you bear with me because I believe this will bless you and I know the Lord has spoke to me so I want to read in uh, 1 Samuel 1 and 6 Hannah is being uh, picked on Praise God. And she is facing uh, adversity. And I want to read this. And it says in 1 Samuel 1 and 6. And her adver adversary also provoked her sword to make her fret. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. And so did this year by year. When she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. So I began to think about how Penina began to provoke Hannah because she could not have children. Praise God. So Hannah was sorrowful. And she begins to go to the Lord in prayer. But it says and it says that she that she was provoked and wept and did not eat. And I began to think about uh, how the Lord moved for Hannah. So let's read this in verse 1 and 9. It says, So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drank. Now Eli the priest sat up on the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said unto the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt indeed look upon mine affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and forget not the handmaid, but will give unto will give unto the Lord all the days of his life. Therefore shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass that she continued to pray, praying before the Lord that Eli began to mark her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli, she had been drunk, Eli had thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away the wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid. And then she begins to tell him, The abundance of complaint and grief have I spoken. And Eli answers and says, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition thou hast asked of him. And he said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So I believe she prayed until she prayed through. I believe a heaviness lifted. Praise God. And I believe Hannah prayed through. And she was no more sorrowful. Her countenance was changed. David said, He's the lifter of my head. Praise God. So I began to think about how the Lord remembers Hannah. And how she uh, becomes pregnant and she has Samuel. And she says, I have asked of the Lord. So she, I will name, she says, I will name him Samuel because I have asked of the Lord. And I began to study this and look up uh, the name of Samuel in the Hebrew and the different names for Samuel. And it means God heard. And I just praise God for that. You know, nothing happens by accident. And I began to think about how... Hannah says, you know, this child is not going to be his own, but he's going to be given to the Lord. And the word tells us if we train a child up in the ways of the Lord when they are older, they will not depart from it. Praise God. And I begin to think about how this is why we dedicate our children uh, to the Lord. This is the verses and the chapter that we use in the word of God. The way that Hannah dedicated him. So I want to read this about Hannah, how Hannah um, gives him back to the Lord as she promises. It says in the word of God, and it says, And she said, O my Lord, as my soul lives, my Lord, I am a woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition as I asked him. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord, as the long as, long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. 
And then I begin to hear, I begin to read Hannah's uh, prayer, praise God. How many know that prayer and praise go hand in hand? We got to believe the Lord has done it and praise Him. The Word says to come to Him with faith, knowing that He is able and He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Praise God. And I, I love how uh, Hannah goes into a praise and she begins to praise God because praise and prayer go hand in hand. So let's let's read Hannah's praise. This is so powerful. And it reminds me of John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, how she was barren. And when the Lord blessed her and blessed the fruit of her womb, and she had John the Baptist, she went into a powerful praise, and it just blesses my heart every time I read it. So this is Hannah's prayer and song. And it says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God, no more so exceedingly proudly, proudly, no more arrogancy become out of your mouth. For the Lord is God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Come on, somebody. And the bows of the mighty men are broken, but or excuse me, the bows of the mighty men are broken, and stumbleth and are girdeth with strength, that they were full have t have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So the barren hath borne seven, and she hath many children as wax feeble. The Lord killeth, and the Lord maketh alive. He bringeth down the grave, and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor, he maketh rich. He bringeth low, he lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill. Praise God. So set him upon princes, and to make him inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the the world upon them, and he will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall he silent in the darkness, for by the strength shall no man prevail. For the adversities of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of the heavens shall he thunder upon them, and the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and shall give strength unto the king, and exalt the horn of the anointed. Praise God. So she goes into a, a praise and into a song, and it's so powerful. Praise God. And I begin to... I begin to think about um, Esther. I begin to think about how Esther in 4 and 15 through 17 and Esther 6 and 7 through 8, Esther prayed and fasted for three days and she experienced a breakthrough as well. The Jews were saved by God using her to intercede and it was an intercession prayer. It was a breakthrough prayer, praise God, that Esther had experienced. And I begin to think about how we can pray with a burden and prayer with a burden is so powerful praise god i just thank god for each one of these how many of you have ever experienced you know a breakthrough prayer an intercessory prayer how many of you ever experienced praying with a burden that's when we see uh, souls birth into to the kingdom of god when we can pray on men we can travail on men we can begin to pray and see hearts uh, change and lives change and destinies changed uh, yokes broken come on we can get into a place of prayer and see yokes broken oh hallelujah we can see signs and wonders glory to god so i want to uh, go to nehemiah one and four praise god nehemiah one and four So Nehemiah begins to have a burden for his people and he begins to fast and God opens doors for him that no man could open. And the king not only provided, give him permission to leave, to go back home, but he sent letters with him for the governors and he sent captains of the army and he gave him provision and wood to make beans for the gates and God moved completely. And I don't want to read the whole story, but I just want to read to you Nehemiah's prayer through Nehemiah 1 and 4 through 11. This is so powerful. He began to pray with a burden. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned. So Nehemiah hears how the city's lying in ruins and how his people are perplexed. And he hears the state of, of uh, the children of Israel when they come out of exile. So he goes back after this prayer and fasting and he helps them rebuild. And so God has just blessed them. And he put this, Nehemiah, this burden in Nehemiah to help them rebuild. Seeing they have come out of exile and they've got work to do. they got to take back what Satan stole from them. In verse 4 it says, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the Lord God of heaven and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, and great and terrible God keepeth the commandments and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear be now attentive and thine eyes open 
that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess the sins of the children of Israel that we have sinned against thee. So there's power in confessing to God and calling on him in spirit and in truth. There's a scripture that says call on him in a pure heart. There's another scripture that says call upon him in truth and he will hear you. Praise God. It says, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though they were cast out, out to the uttermost parts of heaven, yet will I gather you from hence, and will bring them to the place that I have chosen you to set my name there. And now are thy servant and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let not thine let thine ear be attentive unto the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants. Desire for the fear of thy name and prosper, I pray thee, the servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man for I am the king's cup bearer <clears throat> so that he goes before the king and the Lord moves and opens doors that no man could open and Nehemiah went back and he helped him spiritually and he helped him naturally and he helped him rebuild praise God God is so faithful you know that when we're in a time in our life we're in a season where we got to take back where Satan stole from us and we're pressing the Lord will bless us and he'll send somebody along our way to help us praise God and he's a help in the time of need. Praise God. He makes a way where there seemeth to be absolutely no way. Praise God. So I want to uh, just uh, point out some sh a few things today. And I want to give you the scriptures because I'm not able to read them all. As though I would love to, I'm not able to read them all. And I just really feel led to share this. Praise God. Really get out of my comfort zone sharing videos. I don't much care for videos. But I want to obey the Lord and get out of my comfort zone and share what the Lord has given me. Praise God. So I begin to think about how Nehemiah prayed with a burden and God moved and he fasted with that burden. Hannah, <clears throat> and one thing about it, a real burden will cause you to pray and fast. Praise God. Hannah prayed from her heart, but didn't make any sound from her mouth. But Ezra in 10 and 1 began to weep in prayer. In Judges 6 and 36 through 40, God calls Gideon and uses him, praise God, to save Israel. But Gideon seeks for a son, and it is wisdom to ask for confirmation when the Lord speaks. So Gideon really wanted that confirmation, but the Lord showed him time and time that he was with him, that his hand was upon him. I begin to think about how the Word teaches us to pray with a pure heart and call on him in truth. Deuteronomy 23 and 5 says that Balaam's prayers were hindered. This is prayers that are hindered. It says, Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the cursings into blessings. Praise God, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Proverbs 15 and 9 says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. He didn't hark them into Balaam's prayers, but when he went to curse them, the Lord reversed it and caused him to bless them. Praise God. Thank God that no weapon Satan has performed against us. It shall not prosper. Every tongue that rises shall be condemned. Praise God. So I want to um, talk to you today about Abraham, praise God, in Genesis 18 and 20, how Abraham begins to stand in a gap. And there is an intercessory prayer, praise God, where we stand in a gap. And that's where we're at in this day and time. We're living in a time that we're going to have to stand before the, the porch and the altar and weep and pray. We're going to have to travail, praise God. Uh, our family and loved ones and lost souls back into the kingdom of God. We're going to have to pray like never before. We're going to have to praise like never before. Like the song says, we're going to have to raise a hallelujah before the presence of our enemies louder than the unbelief. Come on, somebody. We got to put a praise on it. We got to believe. Praise God that the Lord's done done it, that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever think or ask before you can even ask him, before you can even think of it. He can do exceedingly and abundantly. He's an almighty God. He's greater than anything on this earth. When waves are over your head, they're under his feet. Seeing that he's subdued all things under his feet. He's above all kingdoms and dominion and might. 
and everything that's got a name and everything will everything every person everything will bow and confess that jesus is lord every knee excuse me will bow and confess that jesus is lord so i want to read this in revelations 18 and 20 praise god just bear with me this is just a little bible study i'm doing today praise god i want to read this in uh, excuse me genesis 18 and 20 and the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from hence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood before the Lord. So the Lord is close to Abraham, and the word of God says that Abraham is a friend of God. So the Lord and Three men, angels, came before Abraham. So the Lord begins to say, well, I hide this thing from Abraham. And he begins to show him how he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because the cries are great. The sin is great. It is grievous, praise God. So the men go to set their face towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. He stood before the Lord interceding, praying. And it says, And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he says, pre-adventure, he says, let me continue to speak. There be 50 righteous within the city. Will you also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous? So then he begins to plead with the Lord for 40, for 30, for 20, for 10. And then he says, and, and he said, behold now, Lord, I have taken up upon me to speak unto the Lord. Let me continue, pre-adventure, there shall be 20 found. And he said, I will not destroy it if there's 20 sake. And then he begins to say for 10. And it says, And the Lord went his way, and as soon as he left communing with Abraham, Abraham returned to his place. And I began to think about how Abraham was standing in a gap for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he was standing in a gap because his nephew had uh, lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, his nephew Lot. And I began to think about how the Word of God says that God moved for Lot because of Abraham. Praise God. And I just want to read this about... This really began to minister to me, too, about the last days. I wasn't even going to go this way, you know, in my spirit. But the Lord laid it heavy upon my spirit about how we're living in the last of days. Praise God. And the Word of God in Luke says, in Luke 17 and 28, it says that the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. It'll be like the days of Lot. Come on, somebody. The sin in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was grievous. The cries went out before the Lord. And I began to think about that cry, how uh, I began to think about that and you know that cry uh, the word of God tells us that sin is a stink to God it's a stink before his nostrils nostrils the word of God says a stench how sin stinks because the Lord Jesus Christ the Father God is so holy so righteous and how it's a stink and how that cry that stench went out before the Lord that cry went out before the Lord and he come down to see if it was wicked as the cries and I begin to think about how I um Cain rose up and slew Abel, and uh, the blood began to cry out. And the Lord came to Cain, and he said, Where is your brother? And he said, Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, The blood cries out. How many know the sin cries out? How many know the blood would cries out? I begin to think about how this wickedness cries out and how it's a stench before his nose. Hallelujah. And I begin to, to study the wickedness. Uh, and uh, then I begin to, to see how Abraham was standing in a gap. This is a shadow of the rapture. This is a shadow of the coming of the Lord, I should say. Praise God. And I begin to think about how Abraham was standing in a gap and he stood before the Lord. We got to stand before the Lord. We got to pray, travail, and weep, praise God, for those that are lost and undone. And I begin to, to see how the Lord sends the angels and he comes and he appears to Lot. And it says in verse 13, For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxed great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. How many know the New Testament says there'll be scoffers in the last days, mockers in the last days? Come on, somebody. And Paul talks about perilous times and a falling away. And, you know, I begin to see the wickedness in this, in this story as I begin to read. And it says, while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon his wife and upon the hands of his daughters. And the Lord being merciful unto him... And they brought him forth and sent 
him within the city. And, and it came to pass when they had brought forth, he abode and said, Escape from my life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto him, So the angels began to rush. They began to urge. They began to, praise God, uh, compel them to get out of the city. The Lord is going to destroy it. And I begin to think about how the New Testament says to uh, go out to the highways and the hedges, compel my people to come in that my house may be filled. We got to compel people in this hour. We got to pray in this hour. We got to have a burden in this hour. And I, so the angel gives Lot <coughs> excuse me, instructions and he says, don't look back. I begin to think about how the New Testament says, He that looks back is not fit for the kingdom. But Lot's wife looked back because there was something in that city she was still wanting. Praise God, she didn't die out to those things. She didn't want to sever those things from her heart. She was still holding on. When she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. Praise God. And I begin to study this. And I begin to study how in verse 22, it says, Praise God. And the Lord, so this angel even tells Lot, I can't even destroy the city till you're out of there. Praise God. I begin to think about how the Lord's coming back for his church. <clears throat> Praise God. And it says, and he said unto them, see, I have accepted thee concerning these things also. I will not overthrow this city for that which has spoken. Haste thee, escape hither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was Zor, and the sun was risen upon the earth. And when Lot enter, entered into the city of Zor, so I begin to think about how Abraham tells the Lord that the righteous is not judged the same as the righteous, and the city can't be destroyed until Lot's taken out. I believe the Lord's going to come back for his church. I really do. Praise God. And I don't believe the righteous is judged the same as the unrighteous. And it says in verse 24, Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and overthrew, overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitations of the city, which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Abraham's looking. What's happened a lot? What's happened? Praise God to my family. So Abraham's looking. Praise God. So Abraham, not only did he stand before the Lord, not only did he pray, not only did he have intercede, but he's got faith. He's looking. He's praying and he's looking. He's praying and he's watching. Hallelujah. And it says, Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, lo, the smoke of the country went up like a smoke of a furnace. And when it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, God remembered Abraham and Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. So praise God. Thank God that we can get into a place that we can intercede, that we can stand in the gap, that the Lord can put a hedge about them. Praise God. And I just thank God for that. And I just want to encourage you to pray for your lost loved ones. Pray for those that are around you. Praise God. This is part three, or excuse me, part two of uh, of uh, the benefits of prayer. And uh, the Lord willing, I'll show, I will begin to uh, start a part three, praise God. I hope this word blessed your heart. I just want to encourage you to pray. I just want to encourage you to praise. I just want to encourage you to trust the Lord. I want to encourage you, praise God, like never before, to praise and magnify the name of the Lord. God bless you all.